Hey everyone, welcome back to another video on how to gold all the Gran Turismo 4 license tests. My name is Dabin AGT, and last time I went over all 16 tests in license B. If you haven't watched the last video, I mentioned these disclaimers before starting the demonstrations. If you want my full explanation for all of them, be sure to watch that video before continuing with this one. If you have already watched the video, then congrats Superstar, we can continue with the rest of the video. I'll still be doing my rating system to let you know how difficult I think each test is, as well as defining any terms that might be new to some of you. However, I won't be showing any terms I've already discussed, so I have a section in the description written out to help you in case you haven't watched it. Which you should. Anyways, let's get started with the A license tests. The high speed ring S's have an interesting line in order to achieve the fastest time. Start by leaning to the left side of the track before the first turn. You'll then turn it at the curb and brake once you reach the inside, overshooting the turn a little. Power out to hit the apex on your exit. Now here, the line will be a little bit different than the first turn. Rather than immediately aiming for the inside, slow down and creep the car into the turn. This will allow you to power out sooner and give you a much straighter exit. Listen to your car as you straighten out, and be sure not to straighten out too early, or you'll have your TCS slow you down until the straight. Another repeat mission, but don't worry, this is the last time it happens, and it's actually quite different than its original. The Elise loves to slide, which we'll be taking advantage of for this test. You'll take the same line as A1, but break in a straight line so you don't slide out. The car will feel like it's sliding out, but don't worry, it still has plenty of grip. Just hug the inside as you power out, and be sure to stick to the right before the next turn. Just like the last test, creep into the turn and power out to hit the late apex. Stay on the gas as you travel through the tunnel and cross the finish line. This one's pretty quick and painless. Hit the apex of this first corner and land on the right side of the track as you approach the next turn. At the start of the curb, turn in to look at the apex and brake once you're past the gantry shadow. Coast until you know you can power out without going off the edge and you're through. Another simple one, but on Suzuka this time. 130R is a fast turn, but the Legacy doesn't really help out with that. Here, you'll want to stay on third gear until you hit 120 miles per hour or 193 kilometers per hour, and then ease up on the throttle to maintain that speed. At the 50 meter mark, brake and turn in. Power out once you reach the apex, and make sure you don't go too wide on the exit. Stick to the edge and finish the test. Back at it again with the pace car. I bet you didn't miss doing these missions now, did you? At the start, wait for the pace car to cross and then follow him to the hairpin. Break and turn at the 50 meter board, slowing down just enough to stay on the inside of the turn. Afterwards, keep following the pace car until you're about halfway up the hill. You'll extend onto the grass on the left, and begin braking and turning once you pass this tree. Make sure to get as close to the apex as possible to keep your line straight for more exit speed. Stick to the left after the turn, and start the next two turns as wide as possible, still trying to hit each apex of course. You'll enter into the hairpin narrow, but no need to worry, as you'll have plenty of space to exit. Follow the pace car through the tunnel, and watch the upper left for your next marker. Break and turn just before reaching the sign, and try to get your left wheels as close to the inside curb as possible. Here, I don't do that great of a job, but still keep a solid line by taking advantage of the following curb. Break and turn at the second to last tree shadow, and power out to take full advantage of the outside curb. Hold the power and follow the pace car until you reach the very end of a lap. Twin Ring Motegi. More S-Bend tests, yes? Begin by swinging to the right side as you approach the first turn. Break as soon as you touch the second darker spot here, and aim to stay on the inside afterwards. Now, you'll late apex into the next turn, just like in A1 and A2, except the other direction. After the turn, head back onto the right side 
and watch for the dark asphalt. You'll want to break at the beginning of the darkest patch here and start turning just before the shadow. Keep your exit narrow and watch out for the rev limit. It's pretty short. The first license test on the Nürburgring, and it's certainly not the last. Start on the right side of the track and gently enter the big left-hander. Use a little bit of lift to hold the inside and finish on the right. Break at the end of this tree's shadow and aim for the inside of the turn. Power out after passing the on-track shadow and hub of the curb to maximize your speed. And don't worry about going on the grass. It doesn't slow you down like how reality might make you believe. A8 and the RX-8. That definitely could not have been a coincidence. Take this first turn through the middle of the track and finish on the right side halfway into the straight. Shift up into third gear now and continue aiming for the next apex. If taken correctly, you should have plenty of space to power out and not go past the edge of the track. Stay on the right side until you reach these two shadows and begin turning in. And don't slow down, just send it into the turn and cross the finish line. The Suzuka S's can be a bit tricky, especially for this test. Stick to the right side as you approach the first turn. Then, creep into the turn, making sure to go over the curb. Now, you'll turn in and then brake before the curb, being sure to hold right as you exit. Halfway through the straight, cut back to the left and be sure to get as close to the apex as possible. Exit early and you're through. Another lap with a pace car still in Suzuka from the last test. I guess that's kind of a warm-up, but there's still way more track to see. Start by drafting the pace car into turn one and gently lift in turn to pass through quickly. Begin braking after the curb and get to the left to take the next turn wide. Aim for the apex and power out when you can comfortably exit. Now we're back at the Suzuka S's, so you know the drill here. The car has a little bit more understeer, so just be cautious of that. The third turn will also be slightly adjusted since we have to go through the whole track. Just stay on the inside for longer and hold left until you're halfway to the next turn. Cut back to the right and hold the inside much like the other turns, except this turn has a second apex you must hit to take the turn optimally. And to the final S turn wide and stick to the pace car through all of the Dunlop curve. Now we'll tackle the Degner curve by breaking around the 60 meter mark, which we can estimate is around here. Turn once you hit the darker asphalt and power out just before the curb. Head back to the left and break and turn at the end of the curb. Power out once you've hit the apex and then get back to following that pace car. Make sure you're as far right as possible and start breaking at the end of this shadow. Try to turn in so you hit the hairpin's apex like how I don't do and then power out comfortably to follow the pace car through 200R. And be sure to stay on his outside to make sure you still get the slipstream. Now watch on the right and begin braking at this piece of track. The pace car will be pretty slow here, so you'll actually be braking earlier than you should so you don't end up passing or slamming the pace car. Exit to the right and gently carve your way through Spoon to keep up your speed before the back stretch. Exit comfortably and take full advantage of the outside curb. Now you'll follow the pace car all the way to 130R. Watch for the pace car's weird cross and brake at the 50 meter marker like an A4. Aim for the apex and power out once you've reached it. Afterwards, move from the right to the left to prepare for the Casio Triangle. We're now going to break as this gravel ends, because again, the pace car decides that we're going too fast for Suzuka and needs to set a more casual pace, even though this is a license test. That's timed. And we have to beat that time. And if he slows us down, then it makes it that much harder to beat that time. Be sure not to slam into the pace car by moving on his inside. Try to extend over the curbs and the chicane, but not the astroturf. Exit as straight as you can, and finish off by following the pace car through the last curve to complete your lap with a pace car and golding A10. I'm not super proud to show this one, as I wasn't able to do it clean. You'll start by extending over the left apex, almost clipping the wall. Then, you'll turn right and brake to start a slide. Power through the turn until you bump into the orange fencing protecting you from death. Stay in first gear and hold the inside until you see the finish. Shift up and straighten out, and it's done. I would be curious if you can gold this one legitimately, so leave me a comment if you manage to do so. The only test on Tahi- ooh, ew, why does it make that noise? You'll start on the left and then break and turn in between these two shadows to whip into the hairpin. 
Use any amount of throttle control to hug the inside as much as possible. Just don't slow down too much. Power through and get to your right. Then, break and turn at the end of this tree's shadow to whip into the next hairpin. Same thing as last turn, power out straight and get to the left for one more hairpin. This time, you'll break and turn after leaving this row of shadows. This is the hardest and slowest of the three hairpins, so really make sure not to kill your momentum. Finish on the right and watch for the big streak of light in the dirt to turn the last corner. Hold left as you approach the finish line. This is by far the hardest test to consistently gold in the game, and arguably the hardest test to gold at all. This test could take you minutes to hours or even days depending on your skill level. Get to your right off the line and turn hard left once you reach the shadow. Keep holding left until you get over the hill after the tunnel. Head to the left and break in between the start of the curb and its apex. Start turning at the left apex and cruise as close to the inside as you can. Power out once you've cleared the inside. Now, swing out to the middle of the track to get a better angle for the next turn. Close in on the left apex once more and then break and turn at the tree shadow. Hold right and power through until you're on the right side before the tunnel. Break once you pass the tunnel shadow and try to get as close to the tunnel's edge to hit the next turn's apex. Exit as close to the right as possible and speed your way through to the end. You'll know you got the gold if you exit the tunnel before 40.7 seconds. The extra second saved from that really stacks up after the 50th attempt. A14 on the Nürburgring, try not to die today, oh no. <clears throat> I don't really know where that came from, but uh... Just start the test on the right side and begin gently turning left at the first big shadow. Extend past the curb to keep as straight a line as possible and touch the apex of the next. Finish out on the left and break at the end of the curb on the straight. When turning, make sure to hug the inside between the two apexes in the curve and power out once you get to the second. Finish on the left and zip to the next section. Stay all the way to the left until you hit this weird splotch beside the track. Then, aim to extend over the apex and brake on the curb. Try to maintain traction as you head downhill and exit to the left to help your line through the final turn. Approach the last turn gently and finish the test nice and easy. Back on Tron Mountain once again, except not as painful as an A13 unless you really hit the pace car, which I do. You'll start by staying behind the pace car through the first set of turns. Don't cut the corners too much, obviously, or you'll just end up wasting your time restarting from failing the easy turns. Break once you hit the tunnel shadow and hug the inside through the tunnel. Now I know what you're thinking. We already did this section in A13, so we don't need the play-by-play -play of the rest of the track. You know, like how A9 and A10 work to get- Yeah, well, you're wrong, because this car actually has two things turning power, and liftoff oversteer. Two things we couldn't utilize in A13. So now, I will show you the new line. Here you break later at the apex. And then here you break later at the apex. And then here you break later halfway through the tunnel. It's the same line. You just break later. But now we're in new territory, so you're gonna break at the end of the shadow and try to squeeze into the inside of the pace car. Don't be too afraid to bump into it. Breaking at that point should keep you slow enough to not fail on contact. Just get back behind the pace car and continue up the hill until you reach the top. Aim for the gutters on the inside here and turn to hit the apex while breaking at the shadows here. Hold the inside until you can power up comfortably to the outside. Then head to the right behind the pace car. For the next turn, start turning at the bottom of the hill and start breaking after the shadows. Just like the last turn, Hug the inside until you can power out safely. Stay on the right and make your way down to the greatest chicane in history. When you see the pace car turn, start turning and give a small lift to ensure you don't go into the grass on the hill. Narrowly make your escape and end your trial. Mountain. <laughs> Get it? Because it's a, it's a time trial on trial mountain? Huh? Huh? Whatever. Now we get to watch an AI waste 11 seconds of our time, when realistically it could have only been 2-3 to three seconds, but oh we must include carousels so they know where they are, or because of carousel. Sorry, I'm still a little jaded from seeing the pace car. Anyways, enter and exit this corner wide to help out with the next major turn. Break as soon as you hit the curb, and slowly turn until your left side will land past the inside curb. And don't be afraid to slow down mid-S to keep up traction. 
Get to your left and hit the brakes as you pass this patch of light. You'll want to trail brake so you brake as late as possible while maintaining your maximum speed and driving line. Exit wide and hug the left. Now, this windy section is tough, so you'll need to manage your car here to keep it stable. Turn and lift after passing the piece of text after this blue text. Take the inside and brake just after the start of the shadows here. Stay close to the inside before the right turn. Now, cut right and try to extend over the apex a bit and finish off on your left. After passing through this big shadow floor, brake and turn at the first streak of light. Aim a little away from the inside, or you'll do this weird thing that I just did. Don't overshoot the turn and get to your right. Brake and turn at this last streak of light. Aim for the apex and shoot out to the middle of the track to hit the next apex. Stick to the left until you finish the gray curb and then turn in. Stay in third gear, cut to the curb, and power out to the outer edge for the finish. Well, that's another license test done and golded. Be sure to like the video if you found the tutorial helpful, and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Also, comment down below to let me know how much of a fool I am for posting this video two weeks late. Anyways, next time, I'll be doing the IB license tests, which is going to be longer and harder than this one. So stick around to learn how to goal the tests as easily as possible. Thank you so much for watching, and keep up the good pace.